Good morning guys. Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. Today I want to talk to you about a slug repellent that I accidentally discovered. Uh, many of you probably already know about this slug repellent. It's chemical free, it's natural, it's organic, it uh, makes a great fertilizer and even uh, somewhat of a mulcher. Uh, you know, some of the best discoveries have been discovered accidentally. Uh, um, I discover a lot of things accidentally. You know, I plant a bunch of pumpkins yesterday. We planted 13 mounds here. Um, it's the early part of July, and just to remind you again, like I did in this video we made yesterday, if you want the perfect Halloween jack-o'-lanterns, your time has pretty much run out. You've got to get your pumpkin seeds in the ground no later than the first part of July because they take 90 to 115 days to uh, be ready to harvest depending on the type of pumpkin but I mean my point of that is you know I planted some down there on Memorial Day in another part of the homestead but so far just like every year my best pumpkins are the ones that uh, pop up every spring from where I knock the jack-o'-lanterns off the porch after Halloween say mid-November when the pumpkins start uh, biodegrading and starting to rot we just kick them off the side of the porch into the uh, edge of the flower bed there so every spring we get beautiful flowers some pumpkins come up and they end up doing better than any of the pumpkins I plant I mean I hate to admit that but I'm just being honest with you so I accidentally plant my best pumpkins by kicking jack-o'-lanterns off the porch um, but ivory soap I just wanted this is a neat story you know the soap that floats um, the story goes that an employee at Procter & Gamble back in the late 1800s uh, had the butter, the um, soap churning machine on. He went to lunch before he turned the machine off and he came back and discovered his mistake. He went to his supervisor. The supervisor and he both agreed that since no extra ingredients had been added to the batch, they'd go ahead and send the uh, the, la the, the batch of mixed soap off to the uh, molds be fitted for bars so they did and then um, a couple weeks after that all these orders started flooding in to Procter & Gamber for this soap that floats and so they didn't know what the customers were talking about they traced it back to um, this batch of soap that was over mixed and they figured out that by whipping the soap for too long in the machines it put extra air in the soap and it caused it to float and that's how the soap that floats or ivory as we know it began came to fruition was an accidental discovery same thing with the slinky there was an engineer in the navy in the early 40s who was trying to invent springs that would keep the ship's techno gizmo gadgets uh, computer systems from being jarred to death while they were in rough seas and he made this one spring and they hit a wave or whatever and it fell off of his lab desk and he watched it bounce and crawl down a couple of objects there and then spring back to stand straight up when it got to the bottom. So he may have never discovered the best way to keep computers from jarring to death uh, on the battleship, but he discovered the Slinky and then they sold millions, one of the most famous toys in history. Um, and not to go without mentioning Play-Doh, speaking about toys, uh, Play-Doh was originally invented to be a wallpaper cleaner. You just stick it to the side of dirty wallpaper and it cleans wallpaper. Well, it wasn't very popular for that purpose. The company that created it started going out of business. They were ready to file bankruptcy, but they had gotten word that children were using it to make, uh, you know, mold um, items and shapes or whatnot, make Christmas ornaments out of it. And so they went back to the drawing board, they took the cleansing agent out of it, they added color to it and a pleasant scent. And we all love the smell of Play-Doh when we open up a fresh can of Play-Doh. And now we have Play-Doh and it's uh, been a toy that spanned generations. So I guess I'm in uh, maybe not a maybe not a great group of people but at least a group of people that exists and that is people who discover things accidentally. Now I'm going to get right to my accidental slug repellent discovery by pointing out first that earlier this spring we made what's called a weedless garden now obviously there's weeds here we haven't been out here dil diligently enough to weed here within the beds but around each row we put down cardboard and then over here's cardboard and then over here's cardboard so what we can do is we can walk along the rows around the outer edges we haven't had to weed this part uh, a little bit it's grown over the sides there though but not right there 
but uh, we need to weed in here of course and that's why I'm out here this morning but if you'll notice and here we have okra it's doing really well we started this inside earlier in the year before it was warm enough to plant outside then we transferred it and then here we have cucumbers that are doing really well um, on the video we made of the weedless garden using cardboard there's been all these comments saying no don't do that it won't work cardboard attracts slugs cardboard attracts slugs slugs and people some have said I've heard cardboard attracts slugs this is this true so I started researching it uh, googling it looking at other homesteading sites and channels and um, I found that cardboard attracts slugs. Well, why is there no slug damage on my crops here? Look at this okra. I'm going to start at the bottom, and you can tell we, we've even been neglecting watering this stuff in a timely fashion. We've just, it's terrible. But uh, nothing new has gone on here, and yet you see there's no slug damage. I come all the way up the stems, look at all the leaves. No slug damage. Go all the way down, all of them. Okay, I'll just pick one at random. I'm going to come over here and look. I haven't even weeded in here, so I've not been doing any work. There's no tomfoolery going on here, folks, but no slug damage. So, what have I been doing accidentally to repel slugs? Well, every morning I get up 4.30, 5 o'clock, have my coffee either on the porch or way up there yesterday where I made my video about getting rid of a nosy neighbor with a crayon up there at our campground, way up there. Um, and after I finish my coffee, and just before I start homesteading, doing whatever gardening I'm doing for the day, uh, I go in the kitchen and I get my coffee grounds. And I bring them out, and I take them somewhere different every day. Because listen, too much of anything is probably too much. And I say that because, well, what I do is I just waste not what, what not. I know this is good fertilizer. Um, coffee grounds. It's a rel It's got a relatively neutral pH. It's like 6.5. So I don't know if you could actually hurt your plants, but I make sure not to put too much on any plant or in any one patch of my garden or my trees or bushes, fruit bearing bushes anywhere around the homestead by making sure to kind of um, rotate. So today I'm putting coffee grounds on okra and I haven't done it for maybe a week or 10 days because tomorrow when I have my grounds and this here's my disclaimer this is if I can beat my wife to it I've tried and tried and tried to get her to uh, and this by the way folks is a slug guard we demonstrated how to keep slugs off the base of your plants and I put this here and then I just never took it off so if you do have a problem with slugs you can just cut out a plastic bottle top and bottom put it at the base and that'll help but uh, Anyway, my wife has a tendency to just throw these things away, so I've got to beat her to them. So, you know, one morning I'll do the okra. Then the next morning maybe I'll do the uh, cucumbers. And then the next morning I'll go down to that garden and I'll put it in the corn, the tomatoes. And then we've got pumpkins planted at various spots. Uh, I've got blueberry bushes. I've got grape vines. I've got apple trees, pear trees, all this stuff. I don't like to waste coffee grounds. I like to use them for fertilizer. So... While doing my research about, you know, trying to figure out if cardboard attracts slugs, I kept coming across stuff about slug repellents, and I came across several articles and even some videos on YouTube about um, repelling slugs naturally, organically, without chemicals, and one of the most common ways in which people have been doing that is with coffee grounds. So, I had no clue that I was repelling slugs from my garden by simply putting coffee grounds on it because apparently cardboard does attract slugs they want to come and they want to eat it and chew it up and while they're there they go oh I smell fresh green vegetables let's go eat that too well why haven't the slugs eaten my okra and my uh, cucumbers I always want to say pepino uh, that means cucumbers and the cyan and Tagalog and uh, it's Filipino language my wife's language we lived there for six years but, uh, well, it's because of the coffee grounds. I've been putting coffee grounds on pretty much all this stuff, and it's kept the slugs away. So that was my ivory soap. That was my slinky. That was my Play-Doh. Um, I accidentally found that coffee grounds is a great slug repellent, and I wanted to share that with you. Uh, in case you did follow my advice and make a weedless garden, of course, I hope you've been getting out there and weeding the, the beds better than we have been. Uh, 
I've always been guilty of trying to do a million things at once. I'm a little manic and I just go, go, go. Um, but I'm out here to weed this this morning and I just thought before I get to it, I would share this information with you so you can use your coffee grounds. <sighs> Best part of waking up. Um, to repel slugs in your garden. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel, Homesteading Off the Grid, and we will see you next time.